It's the Morning Marketing Machine, here to grow your e-commerce business with proven marketing strategies and tactics, so you can run your business with machine-like precision. My name is Douglas Levin, let's dive in. Welcome to Morning Marketing Machine, and I have a very special guest today. Um, if any, any of you are in the Amazon space, you probably have heard of Anna Davidson. Um, so she's an author of She Made It Happen, uh, speaker and founder of Amazon 101 Academy and Your Freedom Podcast. Uh, she's taught over 2,000 students uh, how to build successful businesses through both online and offline training programs, has a passion for branding, and turning seemingly ordinary products into unique lines. Uh, she's built multiple brands from scratch, over 10 plus years of marketing experience. Um, she's on a mission to empower other women uh, to build successful businesses online after she's left an abusive marriage and has also recently been featured in Forbes magazine. So uh, <laughs> she's, she's a great person to talk to and I'm so, so happy to have you on today. Anna, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here. So thank you. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm I'm so excited to have you here. Uh, obviously, I, I was uh, a guest on your show, and I was I, it was so much fun being on on your podcast. Um, but for for anybody that um, may not know about you, can you I guess I'll let people know like how you got started um, in in this whole kind of Amazon and e-commerce thing. Yeah, no problem. So my background, in fact, I did a microbiology degree, which has kind of come in handy recently with, with the, the current climate. I've kind of gone back to my education and learning and thinking about what I studied about viruses. Um, but I, yeah, I went to uni and then went straight into the pharmaceutical world, um, which actually, it's interesting now because I'm really kind of, I suppose anti-medicine <laughs> so I think the, in, the industry in a way turned me the other way um with me and the boys um you know my children we de kind of very sort of holistic with you know therapies and things like that I kind of limit ever going to the doctors unless I really 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 need to um but yeah I actually am really grateful for that industry in some respects that working for a really blue chip company you know a large company it gave me a lot of experience around branding and I think you kind of learned some kind of self-development stuff from working in the corporate world as well it just it kind of held me back a little bit you know because like in meetings you've got to like it's all about KPI hitting KPIs and um I always felt like I couldn't really speak my truth um which I think other people that I've spoken to that have been in the corporate world also felt similar in some respects so I kind of always had that feeling that I wanted to run my own business and um, it was actually when I had my first son Jacob that I kind of saw it as yeah I'm pregnant I'm going to have this child I've already sought out what it's going to cost me for like you know childcare when I go back to work and I've, I just got this leadership job where I was managing a team of representatives and it was all like career 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 and then, because um, I kind of didn't really see myself as that kind of maternal, really. <laughs> I know that sounds really bad to say. Um, but I was just so driven at the time. But then when I was on maternity leave, I just found myself searching on the internet for like, you know, the typical how to make money online or um, how can you work from home? And um, because I just, it, I just changed. My whole kind of mindset changed with it all. I kind of felt that I was reflecting, I suppose. I think when you pause and you've been on this, like, so it's, the, it's like the rat race, isn't it? We say, as, and I just kind of took that step back by being on maternity leave and started feeling like, I don't know if this is for me anymore. I did go back. I actually did go back, but it was a couple of years after that that I left. There was lots of redundancies happening. And I think they yeah they got rid of me on like the third round um and I think they're still having redundancies now actually um speaking to people still in there so I was really pleased I was one of those people that was really pleased I was maybe done it because I was kind of ready for, to take my foot off the edge of the cliff and I kind of went into then the online world after that um and did lots of different things before I kind of discovered Amazon actually um I kind of <laughs> I think I don't know if anyone else listening to this could relate to it, but you, when you're looking for things like work, make money online and work from home, there are a few sort of scammy opportunities that you come across. Um, and I wasted a bit of money on 
different kind of affiliate things not to say that affiliate stuff is bad because there's some very good for the affiliate opportunities but there's also some very bad ones you know um and I kind of learned then a lot about digital marketing and started wanting to educate myself and invested in like education around things like email marketing and copywriting and Facebook marketing really became my thing and um I I actually started then realizing that I could help people with some of the skills that I'd learned. Um, and I started to help offline business owners like restaurant owners. And there was a chiropractor that I helped and I was managing their social media, doing all their Facebook mainly. Um, and it was in the days of when fan pages came about. Um, so I was kind of like helping. I just thought that's a real good target market because even though I was felt like I was still learning, I knew a lot more than, they did if you know what I mean so I I was an expert to them but then there was other people online that I looked up to like the gurus of Facebook marketing that they were the experts to me if you know what I mean so um yeah I think a lot of people I've been speaking to recently in this pandemic to say yeah, the skills that you probably learn online like maybe people who've just only recently started an Amazon business like in the last year or two um, and they're still building their Amazon business. I'm like, you know what? You've got a lot of skills that you could actually help a lot of people right now. Um, and I think sometimes we forget that. So, and then I just, I, I just learned those. So I actually stumbled across Amazon. I really did because I was never interested in physical products um, because I kind of thought you'd need staff and warehouse. And it, I don't know, I just didn't think that you could scale um, with just being kind of a solopreneur, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um and and it was the amazon the fulfillment by amazon that really kind of gave me that light bulb moment that was in 2012 2013 when i got into the amazon space and then it's all all went from there really <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of like how it was be, becoming a mum you know it was becoming a mum that kind of woke me up to the time balance you know time was sort of more important than money i suppose at that point in time so, so how did that work then if you if you had that like the all the marketing and Facebook ads and, and the other stuff that you already knew and you're kind of going into Amazon did that did any of that translate as you're trying to learn Amazon or what did it still feel like these were different different things that had two different kind of skill sets to them or how did that, that part work? no I think it did really help especially like with things like keywords because you're familiar with that SEO and key you know all of that kind of stuff it did really help and I don't just sell on Amazon I sell mainly on Amazon but I also sell you know, I've got my own e-commerce stores so I could see how I could also do you know Facebook ads for different strategies on Amazon mm -hmm. and off Amazon so it did really help actually having have done all of that beforehand, all the kind of marketing really. Mm -hmm. And I think you kind of have that marketing mindset for like when you're doing, when I was doing like graphics and things like that, that, you know, you know, the imagery and trying to get attention by the copywriting that you do. So all of that helped really, I think in the Amazon world, it's just interesting because when I first went online, someone approached me about selling on eBay and I was really kind of like, oh, no, 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 you know, that's not for me. Um, because I never thought I was going to go into like physical products. I was bought into this laptop lifestyle and <laughs> information, you know, um, and me being able to sort of travel and just pick the boys up from school and work around me and my laptop. Um, so it's, it's funny, really, how I've gone like in one big circle and actually, you know, I've gone into physical products. Um, but I think there's that perception that if you go into physical products, your house is going to be jam packed full of boxes and products everywhere. And actually that's not the case. You can do that, but it's not the case. You don't have to. <laughs> so, so did you start with like the arbitrage thing where like they're packed up in, gar in garages? Or? I didn't actually, I didn't actually, but I have, I started in the supplement niche. That was where I started in one of the most competitive niches. Um, <laughs> and I did come, I was, I grew, I, I think there was four, was the five in the end? I don't know if we actually launched because there was, there was three of us because I had this mini mastermind of people that I'd met online. Mm -hmm. And we used to regularly speak and share. And there was, there was Jax that was really into YouTube and he was really good at YouTube. There was somebody else that was like, just Google AdWords. 
and then another guy that was really into blogging and I was like the Facebook person we used to just like share what we were doing it was a really good little mastermind group and I I'd watched this webinar on Amazon and I was telling them all about it and they were all really interested so we decided as a group to kind of let's go for one product so there wasn't like a huge risk Mm-hmm. You know, well, actually, it was me that convinced them. There wasn't a huge risk on me. <laughs> um, and we d- so we did the supplements together. And then actually they then kind of dispersed and started doing other things. There was, there was two of us that carried on with the Amazon and the other two guys didn't. Um, and so, but it was a really, that was a really good way to learn because we all kind of inputted into it as well. And we all had different skills. Um, so we did supplements. Um, I think it was four supplements in the end. There was a, a prenatal vitamin and a skin and hair, a uh, nail vitamin and a weight loss one. Oh, we did a probiotic as well. Um, but I'm trying to think how, when I came out of that niche, it was probably 2016, I think, um, because it just got so competitive. And anybody that sells in the supplement niche will know that um you know your profit margins are a lot low you've got to you've got to be prepared to spend a lot on ppc advertising mm-hmm. um i think i secretly wanted my own drugstore online you know because <laughs> <laughs> i was going to pharmacy to go back there. um but it was that was all good learning that was all good experience and then so i so i went straight into private label labeling but i have done okay i've come across faddy type products that are other people's brands there was a brand in the us that i came across that was a a teenage market mm-hmm. a teenage girl market and as and there was a product i thought it was just going to have a lifespan of about three to six months but it was about a year mm-hmm. um and then it just became like a price war and a race to the bottom mm-hmm. um but so yeah i so no i didn't start in the but I, I know a lot of people that do quite well at that i just don't know if it's for me long term really yeah. um so yeah, I've I've had have had moments where I've had stock delivered to my home, <laughs> 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 but generally that isn't what I kind of want to do. You know, it's the the hands free model of you know getting my agents to send it directly to Amazon FBA really, or or you know another fulfillment center if you sign off your own website. So. Yeah, yeah, that that was I think the first thing that I wanted to get rid of <laughs> as soon as we got to a level. It was like because I started with arbitrage and I'm like, um, I hate absolutely hate having to print products. So I was like, um, all right, we have enough money, it's going somewhere <laughs> else. I'm not dealing with it anymore. I know a few people do books. Mm-hmm. Um, I've met along the way, and they kind of get these like it's like auctioned off load of books, and there's probably like you know out of. I don't know, 500 books, there's probably like 10 that are really, really valuable in there. Mm-hmm. And they then seem to have all these stories. They don't know where to put all these other books that <clears throat> they've kind of bought in this, like, you know, auction. Um, and that just, yeah, yeah, that doesn't excite me. And, you know, I'm not, I, I know that you can, uh, you know, that's a great way to get started. And you, and there's people that do make money from doing stuff like that. But I don't know, just don't know if it's for me, really. Right. <laughs> So, so I would ask you then, what's the part that is for you? Like, like obviously you, you talked about um, a, a lot of people that you've taught over the years, and um, but like, what is your favorite thing that you do at this point? Then? So I focus now on, you know, really building premium quality brands mm-hmm. and Amazon have kind of gone that way as well, which is interesting. Um, and, you know, it's kind of creating a brand that makes, um, I might be the most expensive in that niche, but the, the packaging is quality, you know, it's a premium item, premium materials, it offers more value um, and just building that kind of longer term brand and getting it trademarked and, you know, doing what you would do as a like an offline traditional business, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but but focusing on like sort of beautiful packaging and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how I sort of like separate. That's how what I focus on separate myself. So a lot of the time I will probably spend more, you know, my landed cost of that item is going to be more expensive than if I, than probably a lot of the competitors would be. Mm. So, so my price point, my retail's got a price point is going to be higher. 
Well, well I, I, I think that's ultimately comes back to somewhat what, the marketing stuff you probably learned over years, right? Because yeah, it's the idea of you don't ever want to compete on price. You all, like you'd rather be the premium product. Um, otherwise, there's mm -hmm. a race to the bottom that starts, and you're a me too product. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, so um, you you had obviously referenced some of the people that you were in a mastermind with before. Like, how how did you like? That's one thing that I think not enough people actually have in place because like what we do is a very lonely existence. Like you're, especially with the virus starting where it's basically you and your computer. <laughs> um, so, so being able to find people that, that are good for a mastermind. I mean, like how many freaking thousands of books have you probably read where you talk about yeah. the right. of masterminds and, and other people either hold you accountable or to bounce ideas off of like how did you find like those people that that were helpful for, for you for mastermind so we'd actually all were part of a group <clears throat> that we'd bought a program that was a kind of like a digital marketing educational program mm -hmm. and so and there was lots of different strategies in that group and I think we all felt a little bit overwhelmed we were all based in the UK as well so we just kind of, kind of I don't I can't remember how we initially connect like who decided or we just kind of, I think maybe we maybe someone posted in that group and said oh I'm looking for an accountability partner or something like that and then because what was funny was we called ourselves the four musketeers which is so cheesy mm -hmm. um and but it was really valuable you know it really kept us on track and you know I've invested in sort of coaches and and also network with a lot of female entrepreneurs that we have kind of, I suppose, it, not so regularly every week masterminds, but we have like, you know, ad hoc kind of catch ups. And it's a bit like the group that we were in when we were kind of doing our Instagram project as well. I think it's always good to kind of network with other people within your particular industry or niche because it's just, you just, it's just so valuable, isn't it? Because you can, you can share ideas and different bits of tips and strategies and, like you say, it can be a lonely place working online. So I think it's so important to do that. And I always say that to students of mine that when you first start, especially, I think it's hard initially to stay accountable and keep yourself on track. So it's even more important to do when you first start online, I think, mm -hmm. um, to keep yourself on track and accountable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's definitely something that I know in my experience, like it's been about six years, six plus years for me, is that's um, after a little bit of time, like I know for me, it, it's, it's hard to, to basically stay accountable to yourself sometimes. So it is, I know, at least for me, it's easier if you have that accountability to somebody else um, that a master yeah. can bring. Like, like all right, I'm, I'm telling you that I want to accomplish this goal by this date and they're holding me to that. So I feel like I, like, even if I want to blow it off for whatever reason, um, I, I'm going to feel that, basically the second set of, of eyes on me where it's like, all right, I, well, okay. It's not just me now. I'm, I've got to look this person in the eye if I screw this up. Exactly. exactly. And that's why, cause recently I was thinking, I, I've done a lot where I've been, I suppose, the leader of a mastermind and mm -hmm. kind of recommending that for everybody else. But I thought, you know, it's been a good couple of years that I've actually been in and I invested recently, like, I think it was like May, June time into a mastermind group mm -hmm. um, that is actually, yeah, I do things with guys as well. I'm not just like all female entrepreneur, but this was a female group that I was in. And I've got so much out of it. Like you say, by saying like every month we say what we're going to achieve that month. And I think when you put it out there and you say it to, say it to a group of other entrepreneurs, this is what I'm going to do. It kind of, really have to go for it because otherwise you feel like a bit embarrassed if you don't hit that or don't you know get close to or you just like become lazy and don't do anything so um I think I felt that I was doing a lot for my students which is still quite good because that helps you stay on track yourself mm -hmm. listening to their goals but then to grow further you want to you kind of it's that is it is it Stephen Covey that says it I can't remember who it is. I can't remember what book, but you know, it's like you are the result of the seven people that you hang around with. Yeah, um, yeah. So you kind of need to always be growing and looking at people that <clears throat> are doing better than you to kind of bring you up really. So this is why I kind of got involved with this mastermind with some really powerful women in there that are 
doing amazing things that I kind of feel like I'm not doing as well as you know because that's and it just really inspires me that kind of stuff to network with people like that so yeah yeah I, I'm of the same mindset of like I always want to be the dumbest person in the room <laughs> like if I can yeah exactly <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it's true though it's true because it just helps lift you grow you you know yeah and, and um, I think it was one of my mentors that says like even um if you can find yourself in some of those groups, like say you're only doing, I don't know, 5 million, but somebody else is doing um, 100 million and you're, you're in masterminds with those people, there's still something that you have to offer that, that is probably going to be beneficial for others. Um, yeah. So, so it, it, it's you looking at yourself, not from that net negative position, but you have something that can be helpful. Um, yeah, so, exactly. So while you still are probably, at least I know I, I typically look at myself in a, in that negative light sometimes, but there's always going to be something regardless of how, how successful somebody is that you're going to be able to help them with. Um, yeah, definitely. And I think I'd noticed that from doing masterminds with my students that I was learning things from them. Because we, we, we all learn from each other, don't we? Uh, I think sometimes when someone's got a fresh kind of... Um, my outlook on something it kind of gives you ideas that when you if you've been in a particular niche or area for a while you know so that, yeah I think it, I definitely agree with that that you know everybody's got something to contribute haven't they really yeah definitely so so obviously like uh you talked we talked a little bit before in in your intro about like like you're on a mission to, to obviously empower women uh, to build successful online businesses so how did you arrive at, at that like like what kind of when what what got you in that position um so it's, yeah when I first started there's a bit that I missed out when I first started that that when I first started I was helping mums and, and mums in business really mm -hmm. and the mums that kind of a lot of them were doing like MLM type businesses mm -hmm. and because I had a sales background being in the pharmaceutical industry I kind of felt like a lot of mums that were doing those types of businesses really loved their products, but weren't that great or didn't really like selling, you know? And so, cause I was from that sales background, I was, I was helping mum, but it was offline. It was doing like little networking groups, but um, I felt like I look back on that now and I think I wasn't very clear and focused about what I was actually doing myself. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have, I think I was too scared about offers. And then I soon realized actually a lot of these mums weren't going to invest in what I was wanting to offer. And that actually I needed to go to kind of maybe more medium sized business owners, you know? Um, so then I started when I was doing all my Facebook and Amazon, I, when I was in the corporate world, I was all sort of keep, competing with guys and kind of liked being that, geezer bird as I was off some reference and I used to banter with the guys and be competitive and loved all you know just loved that kind of work banter um and thought well actually yeah I'm not really that mumsy and moved away from like the female niche and then now I've like come back like I was saying at the beginning like one big circle that it's just been a natural progression that this year I started sharing my story of all my troubles when I was in my very abusive relationship and I think that has brought a lot of connection with women. Mm. And it, it wasn't really like my intention. It was just that initially it was part of my healing that I just thought, why am I embarrassed about this? I'm mm. holding it back. And actually it could inspire one person that, or, or someone that could be stuck or in that horrendous situation I was in and it could actually help them. And I was thinking about it through COVID because I've kept seeing the news reports that domestic abuse is going up. And I also kept thinking, thank God I left when I did, because if I was in lockdown in that relationship, it would be hell. Mm -hmm. So I think just by sharing that story, there's, it's just naturally that women have started following me and maybe been inspired by my story. And it's just been absolutely wonderful, really. I feel that I've gone from being embarrassed about it and then openly talking about it and then thinking why was I embarrassed about it anyway I think I just didn't want to be branded as because whatever you talk about you your people reference that in your brand and I thought you know what people will reference it in my brand but actually I should be proud of it because it's something I'm hiding and it is all part of my story and it, anything bad that you go through whether it be lose your job 
mm-hmm. difficult marriage or, or abuse and things like that or um you know a health condition or anything like that it's all what makes you in life isn't it it's what makes you stronger and kind of just makes you as a person so why not just get it out because actually it's a two thing it helps me heal and just not keep hiding it away and it also it helps sort of inspire other people to think gosh she's done it as a single parent with all those troubles Mm -hmm. I'm worried about starting a business because I I was reading something recently that 60% of women have thought about running a business but they're scared of failure Mm -hmm. I think probably there's loads of men as well that feel like that but it was just a stat particularly about women and I thought yeah you know it just it it just feels right feels like it's my niche but I do obviously help guys as well you know and well you know like me and you on the podcast there's people you know guys I've had that I've interviewed on my podcast um but I think there's just this alignment recently with sharing my story really so that's where it's sort of come from and it, and it is a great story. And, and, and one of the things that I was wondering too is uh, obviously you've, you've referenced some of the history, but how do you, um, how do you deal with, with that situation and move past it when, when uh, so many people in your situation and any, uh, not even in that kind of a situation, but just normal everyday bad situations where they've given up or they would have looked at yeah. it from, from uh, I can't get ahead or anything like that. So like what, when you're when you're in that situation like what what helps you to get obviously first to get through it and then um to 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 kind of find yourself in in i don't know if i would say better but like 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 a a, like what i would assume you feel like is a healthier situation than you were in the past yeah like like what what helps you get it took me like when i was in it it took me a while to get out and i i think this is why i was embarrassed about sharing it because people that know me know me as a strong person Mm -hmm. and they were quite surprised to hear it and i think i always thought it always happens really weak people because people say all the time why don't these people just leave if they're getting you know abused why don't they just leave and you don't really get that until you're actually in it because I think because I was the breadwinner in my relationship as well Mm -hmm. and so I kind of was that you know I I, I even felt embarrassed like telling the police at the time just because I've always come across as quite a confident person but it's not something it's something that just it did really creep up on me overnight I think because you know that person really well don't you and you kind of give excuses for mm-hmm. we're not nobody's perfect in a, in a relationship a relationship isn't perfect so you give people excuses for oh you know that was a mistake and you forgive them or but then when you realize you, you're constantly doing that yeah. and then it all comes to a head but I, I think it took me a while to leave and I think so maybe people who could be in that kind of situation or like you said just yeah, there's a lot of people I think this year are going through hell, aren't they? Because they're worried about money is is a very important thing. And so if they're worried about their future job or they've already lost their job, it's very easy to go into yourself and sort of feel sorry for yourself, you know. You and you kind of have to go through that a little bit. You know, you're not gonna just suddenly be like me. It wasn't just like suddenly I was like leaving this relationship overnight or you know just you, you've kind of got to go through a bit of feeling sorry for yourself a little bit to the but you I think you've got to move you've got to it's I what I did was I listened to a lot of positive people I listened to strategies about how a be about be a gratitude that was a lot of things that I did mm-hmm. because I felt like what are the things I should be grateful for while I'm in this situation? Stop comparing yourself to other people because we do that a lot. And I think social media is something that nowadays is so in our face, isn't it? And we just assume that everybody is perfect in their worlds when actually they're not. Um, And so I think one thing is definitely looking for people that you align with or you can relate to or you inspire you yourself you know like we said about reading a lot of books but I, I was I was listening to a lot of podcasts a lot of YouTube stuff I think I was grateful that I'd always been into self-development mm-hmm. so I think that I had that mindset already that even though when I was really fed up I was like pull yourself together Anna you know mm-hmm. what can you do it's not what happens to you what can you do stop wallowing what can you do so definitely follow people 
who inspire you or you, you find just interesting on YouTube or podcasts and things like that. And don't think that everybody's life's perfect. Because that was one of the reasons why I put my podcast together. Because I think we assume that everybody's life's perfect. But then when you actually speak to people and share different stories, everybody's had challenge, everybody's had an adversity, mm-hmm. but it might not be everybody's different, you know, not everybody has to maybe be homeless or um, be in an abusive relationship or, you know, be terminally ill and things like that. Everyone's got <clears throat> adversity. There's nobody. And anybody that says they haven't, I just don't believe. There's always been something that you've gone through mm-hmm. um, or, or different challenges along the way. Um, and you kind of, you really challenges are great because I feel that I'm really grateful for everything that's happened, but people think that I'm a bit crazy for saying that. Mm. Um, I wish I hadn't gone through the pain that I did, but I feel grateful for it because it's definitely made me a better person. Mm. Um, Things like, you know, your car breaking down or, you know, you're selling your house and it falls through at the last minute. I'm having a kitchen fitted that's meant to be fitted this week. And the guy's saying it's going to be next Monday now. And I'm a bit like, it's going to be a bit rushed for Christmas. Let's, I said to him, let's just do it in the new year. And he was like, are you sure? Because everyone's like, get, we want to get it done for Christmas. And I'm like, well, why are we stressing about this? Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I just feel like I've become a lot more chilled about sort of everyday challenges, I suppose, that happen. It's like, there's always a solution. Just sit back and just make it happen mm-hmm. and look for another way. There's no point getting all wound up and stressed over something that you can't really do anything about. Just find a solution and find your way through it. Um, so I think that's important to think about that. Having that mindset that there's always a way, you know, there's always a way. Yeah. And, and I, I think that that's one thing that a lot of people honestly don't have is, is like, like if I was to make a generalization, obviously, but, <laughs> but um, um most people don't have that mindset. Like they have the idea that if something bad happens to them, like, oh, this terrible thing happened, I can't win. And it's going to be like this the rest of my life or anything like yeah. that. And, and, and that's where obviously to go through what you've gone through and still have the, the mindset of it will get better. And like, is that something that, that has made it so much better than in terms of getting over s- struggles like like in your life since and in business since then as well yeah definitely I definitely think that like it definitely has helped me with my business because I just don't get we know in like you know in the physical product game there's always challenges that happen and especially like this year with shipping or even just you know we were talking before about importing from other countries or having getting products from your own country and yeah you know there's still challenges with getting products on your own. You know, there's still challenges, aren't there? Or because you're dealing with other businesses and different procedures and processes, and there can be timing delays and things that doesn't just doesn't happen quite right. Um, and dealing on the internet these days, there's often internet issues, like we both know. Um, so I think it's just I'm, I'm always prepared for that next challenge. You know, what's going to hit me? There's, I just I, one of my students was saying to me recently because she'd had loads of problems with Amazon, you know, uh, with opening an Amazon account, I think it was at the beginning. And she was saying that, um, I just kept thinking about what you said. There's always a solution. It's what kept me going. There's always, I've got to find that solution. There's always a solution. When sometimes it doesn't feel like there is a solution because you might try this and try that and you're not getting anywhere. You've just got to be resilient and persistent and determined because you will find a way with whatever you want to do. It's just time that separates it, doesn't it? Sometimes you can get stuff done really quick or get through a challenge or a problem quick. And other times it might just take you that little bit longer, but it's just focus on what you want and finding that way and finding that solution. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. I think, I think I've withdrawn myself from a lot of different friends over the years hmm. because socially I just I can't be in that room of that moaning wallowing now don't get me wrong we all go through some of that because I'm not positive all the time you know (laughs) but I think it's it's the no it's the not wanting to help and get out of that situation I think some people actually like being in a victim mindset Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that just is quite draining to be around there because I just want to be like thinking about opportunities and bouncing ideas and just generally being quite positive. But, you know, I, obviously I do have moans at times as well. <laughs> <laughs> we all do we all do with our human otherwise yeah definitely and, and i think that's that's ultimately at least at least in my case it's been part of the deal in terms of my spouse is like all right um uh there there's going to be those days that you're 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 just not in a good mood and things aren't going right and you're like well um i know that this isn't really going to help me but i'm just my mindset isn't right and I need to complain to my wife or, or whatever yeah, exactly. it is. Right? Exactly. And that's fine, isn't it? It's just like not to, it's not all the time and never kind of trying to help yourself. Yeah. We've got to let it out, you know, when we we are annoyed and like a bit annoyed or a bit fed up. And and this year has been I think tough for everybody really in that respect. Um we we've just had our second lockdown and it feels like we're meant to be out of the lockdown, but it's just a rebrand. We were in these tiers now, tier one, two, and three. Different areas can do different things. And I, I was saying to someone the other day, it's just like a rebranded lockdown. <laughs> 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 so I think it's tough like that, but I think humour, I've always, maybe that was why I didn't want to share my story because I used to hide stuff with humour. Mm-hmm. I didn't want people to know the real because I thought they'd judge me on it. But I think it's important to have fun you know um but it's also important just to be you because you you only ever feel comfortable being you yeah that that, that, that is awesome um it, now you had talked about obviously like like as I, i'm kind of transitioning a little bit here but um you talked about all of the reading and 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 helping in terms of self-help and development like do you have um like current books that you're reading right now that that would help you or have you help, helped you at this point or anything you would um you know what I've there's there's someone recommended one to me recently and I never even bought it but books is probably not something that I've recently bought I love um I'm trying to think of the ones that I've really like changed my mindset in the past a lot of the Stephen Covey ones did and eat that frog oh yeah yeah eat that frog had a really big impact on me because I think that okay it's a business one really but mm-hmm. I think even though that's a business one, we still, um, it, you, you know, like it, during your day, you kind of put stuff off. And it, that can be in a business, but it can be also personally, can't it? There might be someone like you don't want to talk to in your family. <laughs> you put that off. Um, but I kind of like taken that and kind of implemented that. I've got to say, I haven't read many books recently, but there's been a lot that have been recommended to me. And I'm trying to think of the ones that have been recommended that, because in this group that I've got, we have this mindset call every month and we talk about different topics and like, you know, like your perfect day, how your perfect day would like to be and procrastination and thread in the head, as I call it. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's a guy in there that me and him run it has always recommended me these really good books. And I'm like, I've not got, I've just never got around to actually reading them. Mm-hmm. I tend to listen to more podcasts. Um, I like the diary of the CEO. I don't okay. know if you followed um followed that one um and I just tend to just like I'm a bit ad hoc you know I just kind of like I do a lot of meditation that's been my recent thing okay um so there hasn't been someone in particular that I followed I just generally like go onto YouTube and look at different guided meditations or just do just generally have meditation chilled music Mm -hmm. because I think sometimes I'm one of those people that I'm doing so much and juggling so much and I've got a few VAs now that work for me and it's kind of like in this digital space, you know, you've got WhatsApp, you've got Facebook, you've got, you know, it's, you sometimes you have to shut it all down. So I've been doing this kind of ritual, I suppose, in the evening of having a magnesium salt bath, playing mm. chilling out music, having like oils and candles burning um, and incense and all that kind of stuff and just spending like an hour sort of winding down. So there's been a lot of meditation there's is it gabby i'm rubbish with names gabby there's gabby somebody that does a lot of meditation stuff that i've i've got saved in my favorites that i look okay. at um but yeah there's loads of books that i really want to read at the moment well but, but that's good in terms of like obviously podcasts and, and meditation is something i've i've tried myself like um what it sounds like you're kind of doing too is something i've actually really had a hard time doing myself is like the idea of basically kind of like, like 
unplugging every day yeah. and and I know like 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 friends of mine have, have talked about the idea of reflection like you can actually get a lot more ideas and a lot more out of your day if you take an hour a day or 30 minutes yeah. a day and basically get away from everything like you're like yeah. you're doing and uh and like all of a sudden ideas come to you when you're not trying to work or you're not trying to do anything exactly exactly i think it's so important to do that and i'm like i've got to say probably out of the seven days in the week six days i do that oh wow if, um, and if i the, the the whole kind of wind down what i have been trying to do which hasn't been as consistent um is a daily walk Mm-hmm. um just but my excuse is that it is every morning i'm like scraping the ice off my car at the moment it's so cold <laughs> in the uk and it's been really rainy and cold as well but i was i was doing it when it was dry even though it was cold mm-hmm. i didn't mind that but the rain as well it, that's just harsh you know but i felt so good for doing it even if it was literally just 15 minutes because we give ourselves that excuse, don't we? I haven't got time. And now I've got out of the sink again, the sink of it, like routine, doing it. Mm-hmm. Feeling like I'm missing it and thinking I need to get going with that again. Because I was just, I just found a way to do like 15 to 30 minute walk a day. Mm-hmm. Um, and the best time to do it was after I'd done the school run. Because okay. it was like before I start my day, just do it now. Because once you get into things and then it's going to go dark in the evening because it's winter here and it's just not going to happen. So um, I found that, re- I just, I know it sounds mad just going for a walk, but it just really gave me like, just like a clear focus thing mm-hmm. for the day, you know, just like fresh air in your lungs and just, <laughs> um, just, I don't know, just really, really helped with my mindset of clarity, I think. So I'm definitely missing that. And I'm kind of like kicking myself to say, do it again, but it's just so cold out there <laughs> right now. <laughs> Well, so, you figure what it's uh, things change, and obviously season change, and ultimately it, it comes down to you and how you're feeling about yourself. And if you're, you're, if if you can find something else potentially because of the cold, I mean, um, yeah, it, 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 who says you have to do it twelve months out of the year, right? I mean, that's no, true, yeah, true. I think it's just it's those habits, isn't it? Once you get into them, they're really good. It's like I've been taking a lot of supplements this year, probably because of. <laughs> trying to increase my immunity <laughs> the microbiology in me mm-hmm. um and then i notice if one of them runs out that's it i don't end up by rebuying it i'm like why don't i just reorder it off amazon why am i like oh i finished you know finished finished all the capsules now so i won't take take any more of that one it's like silly it's just like get into the routine because if you don't get into the routines it never starts does it but yeah it's i think it, I think those are the challenges with health and mindset of doing something every single day. But the kind of meditation, having a bath and relaxation, I noticed it's really helped with sleep because for years I had a really bad sleep pattern. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's something important I have to do because otherwise I know I don't have a very good sleep. Mm-hmm. So that's why I do it really. I think it's just that whole thing, like your subconscious works over time and it doesn't have to be way back. It was, I was lots of litigation and court hearings and so that was at the back of my mind and that was my worry but nowadays it's just like tasks that I've got to do I think your subconscious just works so clever over time so you just got to focus on that wind down I think mm-hmm. on an evening well and, and it's also the thing when you obviously when talking about trying to get a good sleep I mean it's it's something that I, I more and more I hear about this like that it is so important like a good sleep to, to your productivity, to your life. And, yeah. and we're always taught as business owners, it's about the grind, right? You've got to, you got to work 22 hour days and sleep is <laughs> for the week and all those other kind of things. Right? <laughs> um, but ultimately like, like at least for the way that I've kind of looked at it is like, like, like um, sleep is actually even more important because it's going to give you that creativity. It's going to give you that production that, working 22 hours a day won't <laughs> I know, exactly exactly I think it's like I used to follow Gary V quite a bit I haven't really seen much of his stuff for and he, his energy was always like that wasn't it like can't you gonna hustle and it, like I like him but actually I probably like now more following people that is more about your well-being I think it's because I feel like when you go through moments of time where it's stressful 
I've thought, I think, or oh, maybe it's just like you're getting older. I've started thinking more about my health <laughs> and my well-being. So obviously getting an old lady now. <laughs> <laughs> so. This actually brings up something too, is like, um, obviously like you, you've got, you got children and, and you're working, I assume mo mostly from home with everything that's been going on. Yeah. Like um, uh, this kind of brings up like uh, you as a business owner though, like we talk about the idea of work-life balance. And um, um, this is something that I, I've asked a lot of people about and I'm, I, I struggle with myself sometimes like what, mm -hmm. what is a work-life balance to you? Um, oh, yeah, interesting question. <clears throat> I definitely think it's like recently my son said that I was on, like he called it on the calls, you know, like, like now he would think this was a call. Well, I suppose it is a call, um, but he that kind of woke me up when actually I've done a lot of things to get that balance. But I do feel that this year I've worked a lot harder or put more time in my business. But I think that's because I'm constantly at home. Mm -hmm. um, and I've noticed as my boys are getting older, they're not as bothered about spending as much time with me. <laughs> so when I've said, hey, let's do this, they're like, no. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I have to kind of like really encourage them to. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always been pretty good in the past and always book things in my diary that was for me. Mm -hmm. um, even if it was just like going to it, like Costa Coffee, which is like Starbucks here. Um, and like just sitting there for half and you know just doing nothing but just just chilling out really mm -hmm. or going to meet a friend and that kind of thing and just putting stuff in um spending like I used to put things like 30 minutes um like watching a film you know just something that was different like film or podcast things like that was, I used to put it in as me time mm -hmm. and I always did do it but I've always lived for travel and this year I've, that's probably been my biggest I don't, it's not really frustration it's just I've really missed it mm -hmm. and I've noticed I've not taken the time so whereas before you know if I was going to, we were going away as a family I'd have like a week or two weeks away so I would have that time but because I've like been at home I've noticed I've not like then booked that week off and that's been a big reflection recently and I thought um because we're coming up to Christmas and I'm going to take a full two weeks I've decided Okay. And that's going to be difficult because I think there will be the temptation. I probably will be on social media. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to just, you know, and there may be the odd check in <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. But generally, I just want to be able to not be in my office and just relax and spend time with the family because mm -hmm. um, it's so important to do it. So I think work life balance to me is making sure that. 50% of my time I'm not working because I think it's so easy that work can take up like you know 80% of your time if, you, if you're not careful mm -hmm. and you have to put things in your calendar for you um, or for you know with you and your family I think and this year I think it's been difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, I know, I know. Like, I, I think my wife gives me crap because uh, uh, I'll tell her anytime we're talking about anything. It's like, all right, I have to put it in my calendar, or you have to remind me, or whatever it is. I am not gonna remember, or <laughs> something's gonna come up, and like, like you feel bad, I guess, when you have to say something like that. But you, if you, like, I know myself, and I know, like, all right, if I'm gonna do this, it's gotta be in the calendar, or else it's not gonna exactly, happen. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I think it was when my son said that recently, he said something about, oh, you're, you're always on. There was a line, like, you're always on calls or something. Mm -hmm. And I thought, where's that come from? I've always, like, tried to process. And then when I was reflecting, I thought, I have definitely worked a lot more recently. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I think it's being aware of it, isn't it? Being aware of it and putting things in place. I've already booked a couple of holidays for next year because my theory is, book them now you're protected if you need to cancel it but there's going to be a massive big travel boom at some point and mm. prices are going to go up so get it, get it booked now and if it gets cancelled it gets cancelled yeah yeah so. I, I think we've been trying to do the same thing because we, we want to go back to, to europe for our anniversary at some point so oh, <laughs> we'll see cool. what that. But, where are you thinking of going in europe Oh, well, she loves Ireland. So um, it's where we got married. Um, we brought our family. I love there. Ireland. I've got to say I love Ireland. Yeah, I, I think once um, the kids are old enough, so probably in four or five years, we'll probably move there. Um, oh, so, lovely, yeah. Yeah. 
bigger. It's the whole thing. We can work from anywhere. So um, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, um, so one question I did want to ask you as well, um, before we get, get done with everything is, uh, uh, um, I was on, um, a friend of mine, Mason's podcast and, um, he brought up this question and I loved it so much. I pretty much stole it and asked everybody, <laughs> um, the same thing. So, um, I'm really uh, scared what it is. <laughs> no, but his question was, it, it's nothing bad, but like, um, what's your definition of success? My definition of success is happiness basically i have this quote that i've shared before that happiness is what we think what we say and what we do are all in harmony and for me that's success um and happiness to me means yeah i just i just feel that equilibrium of it's definitely not finances and that's why that's why i do a lot of the coaching kind of stuff because i really want to make an impact especially over the next few years on reaching more females across the world and just like inspire them to go after their dreams really. Mm. Um, so it's a, it's a balance of my children being healthy and their mindset being strong and just finances come into it just because being, having no finances can give you a lot of stress. Mm. Um, but it's definitely not the be all and end all. It's just, I just want to be able to have that freedom really to be able to choose and do what I, I want to do so success is definitely happiness in, in summary which obviously happiness means all those things to me <laughs> well and and that's great I, I know like um like one of my favorite people like I guess that I model myself after is Tom Bellew and he talks about how he was a millionaire on paper and he wasn't happy so like yeah that idea of, of happiness um is is so much more worthwhile to so many people when you actually like get because everyone always says oh um as a business owner we got to make money we got to make money but yeah ultimately at the end of the day if you're not happy like how many million and billionaires are there that are just unhappy and ultimately they're they're not living a fulfilled life i want to feel that if something happened to me tomorrow and i was gone that people would say that i made a difference in this world Mm -hmm. And that kind of means more to me, but it's making a difference in my children firsthand because I feel like they've been through a lot over the years. So I want that, I want to inspire them to go after their dreams. And then after that, you know, inspire other people. Um, but, you know, money comes around that, that money just gives me freedom to be able to do all the things I want to do, but it's definitely not the, the driving force of success, you know? Yeah, that, that's definitely a great thought. And, and um, as we're heading down the home stretch, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on today, sharing some of your story and expert insight. Um, it was so great talking to you. And I wanted to ask you, how can our listeners find out more about what you were doing? Yeah, thanks. And it's been great coming on. It was, it's just been like we've carried on the conversation from before when you were on mine. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, if anybody really the best way to follow me is on the socials. So I'm um, Anna Davidson on uh, in fact, there's the, it's the Anna Davison because I found out there's a few Anna Davisons. So, the Anna Davison on fa- on my Facebook page, but Anna Davison on my profile, and the same on Instagram. Um, and of course, I've got um, Your Freedom podcast is my podcast as well. So, yeah, I think just hook me up on the socials is the best way. Awesome, and and we'll definitely have links for that as well. Yeah. Um, so, so thank you so much, Anna, and thank you for everyone for listening. And I'll talk to you guys next time on Morning Marketing Mission. All right. Bye. Brilliant. Thanks. <laughs>